New Delhi is ramping up security on its maritime border or Sri Lanka to prevent any terrorist from fleeing the country after several attacks in today's blast a van was detonated near one of the sites where an explosion took place on Easter Sunday. Now, a coordinated series of deadly suicide bombings ripped through the country, killing almost 300 people and injuring more than 500. RT's Sarah Montese Oka joins me with the details. Sarah, a very sad story yesterday on Easter. We're still trying to get all of the details. Do we know yet? who might be responsible for these attacks. Well, Scotty, today the government said that it's holding a local radical Islamist group accountable for the devastating bombings. Now, the explosion on Monday kept the island nation on edge. Police detained one person in relation to that explosion, suspected of driving the van that exploded near St. Anthony's Shrine. Sri Lankan officials said this was the first serious attack from the group responsible for the bombings and received help from an international terrorist group. Now, the coordinated bombings on churches and luxury hotels were carried out by seven suicide bombers from a militant Islamic group known as National Tofiq Jamaat. Sri Lankan officials declared a state of emergency and have placed a dusk to dawn curfew. And major social media and messaging services were blocked, including Facebook and WhatsApp. Now, this is all an attempt to block the spread of disinformation. But Sri Lankan officials failed to carry out warnings from intelligence agencies. International officials were warned of the attacks several times weeks ago. International intelligence agencies have informed on the 4th of April that uh, there is such an incident will take place in this country. There will be suicide bombers will attack the various places. After all, as a government, we take we are responsible for all that. Whether we are we are we know the situation or not know the situation, that's a different matter. The people are not uh, concerned about that. Anyway, we are responsible. We are very sorry, and uh, we apologize to everybody. Telecommunications Minister Harin Fernando tweeted, some intelligence officers were aware of this incident. Therefore, there was a delay in action. Serious action needs to be taken as to why this warning was ignored. Now, due to political dysfunction within the Sri Lankan government, the prime minister and his officials were not informed of the warnings until after the attacks. But authorities said they don't have much information about the group, and a U.S. official said that these attacks were likely inspired by ISIS. Former Pentagon official Michael Malouf spoke to RT earlier today and said the group was only known for petty crimes. But we are now looking at a possible religious war. To undertake this kind of, of reaction uh, on this scale and aimed at Christian churches. And why is that? Because there seems to be a religious war going on between Islamists and and Christianity now, it's all sub rosa. We've seen it in Egypt. Uh, we saw a reaction in, in, uh, in uh, New Zealand when, when somebody attacked the, uh, the, the two mosques and ISIS promised retaliation. So I think we're, this, this is, and we got springtime here, and that's always right. time for uh, everything blowing up. And so everything is coming to, to a crescendo and, and uh, a boiling point. The death toll of 290 plus the bombings among the, puts the bombings among the world's worst terrorist attacks since 9-11, which killed over 2,900 people. The bombings were also the deadliest in Sri Lanka in over a decade. This was since the devastating civil war that ended on the island nation. But six of the attacks were coordinated and carried out by seven suicide bombers who were all identified as Sri Lankan citizens. And police have arrested 24 people in connection with these devastating bombings. Scotty, the country is predominantly Buddhist with significant minority groups that include Hindu, Muslims, and about 7% of Christians and doesn't have much history on Islamic terrorism, but this small terrorist organization, National Tofi Jama, has sparked concern and doubt that these attacks are targeting religious minorities. Sarah, we're starting to hear more stories of the victims. We're finding out these are not just people who are native to Sri Lanka. What are we finding out? Well, there are a lot of foreigners within these attacks, people visiting from China, from India, father of two children and husband to Anita Nicholson, who were from the UK, uh, paid tribute to his family and said, I am deeply distressed at the loss of my wife and children. Anita was a wonderful, perfect wife and a brilliant, loving and inspirational mother to our two wonderful children. There was also a Wisconsin native, Dieter 
Kowalski, who had taken uh, to Facebook on Friday, was among the victims and was there for a, on a work trip. He said, and the fun begins. Love these work trips, 24 hours of flying. See you soon, Sri Lanka. A Sri Lankan chief was also among the victims. Uh, a, ch a chef and his daughter, a television chef, who uh, posted an image having Easter breakfast just hour before the tragedy. Well, we will continue to hear these stories and need to, these victims need to be remembered as much as we, so, as we hunt for the terrorists who did this. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.